Hey everybody, welcome to a special edition of our VR News Talk show, the VR Game Nights. Tonight we're talking about Oculus Connect 6. So much new stuff that came out from uh, from the uh, sessions today that we just wanted to get together and cover it all. Um, I am joined by my co-host tonight, um, Gascocles. I wanted to say Zeus Adamus because that's how... Uh, we played most of our time playing. We we you were Zeus Adamas. And that's fine. Either either one works. <laughs> and um, you know, just we just want to dive right into it. I mean, a couple things have changed since our last show. It's been about four weeks, and um, I have picked up a Rift S and I played with it tonight. Last four weeks or six weeks, I've been playing with it, and it's pretty good. I like it. Um, probably four weeks, and um, you know, I don't have to worry about the senses, which is great. Uh, it did lose tracking a couple times tonight, um, briefly, uh, like where my arm was floating across the room. That I think that's something to do with the new update. But very happy with it. Of course, I have a Quest. I have an original CV1 and whatnot. So, um, uh, so what else has happened since then uh, is, of course, the Cosmos, the price was uh, in pre-orders, were, uh, came out. Uh, with the Cosmos is, uh, list price is $6.99. And it kind of fits in between the full, full index kit and a Rift S. So, um, you know, really, besides just the, the regular games coming out, that's what I've seen in the last few weeks. Anything that, before we get into OC6, anything that you wanted to talk about there, Aga? No. Nope. All right, so well, let's dive in. I'm taking these uh, these uh, articles just in order that we found them on that website we uh, were looking at today. And um, the first story they had was finger tracking for the Quest. And it looked really cool, the demo they had. Um, and I guess that would be great if you're in a social, like a VR chat or social VR environment. You, I don't know that you could actually play a game with that. So, what were your thoughts on that finger tracking? I mean, to me, it looks cool, but I I really wouldn't be able to like shoot a gun or you know, not from what I've seen. So, I didn't get a chance to watch the actual video. I just read the post um, about the information. Uh, I was very surprised that it that it's playable uh, at OC six. Um, that it wasn't just uh, an announcement of um, you know impending uh, you know features uh, to come. Um, I mean, I don't know what – I guess the thing for me is – so VR is not fast, relatively speaking, right? I mean, as far as, like, um, object tracking, like, you're not – like, you're not some, you know, David Copperfield magician, right, trying to do sleight of hand. Like, your 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 hands should – theoretically, in most cases, will be the only two objects in motion in, directly within your field of view, and – and they're not moving that quickly. I feel like it should be game usable. Um, I mean, the, the, the thing is, and, and, and what would be interesting, and maybe you saw it in the video, is they describe it as hand tracking, which to me is only of so much applicable use in VR. What, what we really need is we need finger tracking, um, and that's a, a higher degree of fidelity. Um so I don't know. Yeah, and, and, and I probably should have said that's they're calling it finger tracking. And so they were showing people making the okay sign and doing other things. And um, you know, I guess if 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 you know you had a plastic gun or a plastic bow, then or maybe they I, I there was a company that was trying to do like a universal VR controller, which kind of could be shaped into like a, a you know, a shotgun or a small gun or a you know, into multiple because you really don't need like if you're doing a bow, you don't need the string, etc. But I mean, it's interesting. I'd love to see where it goes, and I'm so I'm kind of was surprised that they announced it for the Quest and and not the Rift S at the same time. I don't understand why they wouldn't do it for the Rift and the Rift S. But well, I know why they're not doing it with the Rift, but uh, the Rift S has cameras built in too. It actually has an extra one. Well, and that's an example of one of those things that I think might very well be because of fidelity right the, with the quest maybe the issue is that it makes sense that you want to be as stripped down and as bare bones as possible but that you might sacrifice fidelity and accuracy and speed whereas with the rift if you're tethered to a pc as as, as we kind of always say is bring me the full power of the pc if it means i got to be on a cable then i got to be on a cable and if it means that to get the best 
high fidelity gaming VR experience that it makes sense to have me keep the controller than keep the controller. And maybe that's why it's taken longer to to get to Rift S because it's just not, you know, first person shootery and, you know, high fidelity flight sim ready. Yeah, more, the PC games would be more demanding. Those apps would be more demanding than, than the Quest. I get that. You know, the next thing was I was really surprised about this. There's been a lot of talk about this. Um, a lot of people have been using a virtual desktop sideloaded on their Quest to play their Steam VR games. Originally, it didn't look like it was really that good, but a lot of people have had a lot of luck doing 5G, um, uh, you know, Wi-Fi to their Quest directly from their PC and, and having a, a pretty lag-free experience. Well, Oculus did not, did not uh, uh, announce anything to do with Wi-Fi. What they announced is that they're they're coming out with what they call Oculus Link. And basically, you'll be able to plug the USB-C port on your headset into your computer with a high-quality USB-C cable. And Oculus Link will allow you to play all of your Oculus Rift games on your Quest. Now, I like this because, yeah, I still have a cable, right? But that cable is just USB. I have power in the headset. I already have a battery that lasts an hour or two, right? Um, so I don't need a power cable. Um, I don't need a display cable because, uh, you know, apparently everything's come over USB-C. So I just have that one thin cable. The other thing I like about this is you can use your Quest for uh, for PC gaming. And then when you go on the road, you just unplug it and, and, and take it with you on the road and do your mobile, what I would call m mobile VR gaming. So... So I think that's really cool. And they say when they come out with this, it'll work with any USB-C cable. They they say they're going to release a premium cable. They do say that some really cheap USB-C cables will not work. But they said the average decent cable should have no problem with this. Do you think, uh, to me, this is, I, as a Quest owner, I'm like, I can't wait to try it. Because the Quest actually has higher resolution than the Rift S. Not not that I I have no problems with the resolution. The resolution on the S is better than my CV one. Um, I have no problems with it. I know numerically that you know the the pixels is less, but I played in it for over an hour tonight with no issues, no screen door effect. So, do you think this is going to be a big deal for Quest owners? Uh, you know the, the the proof is in the pudding. You know with this when it's um, I I my my conjecture is i have a feeling that this is going to turn out to be a thing where in some cases yes you can but should you and i and i think kind of as we were just talking i think the less demanding it i think this is a game where you can go in and you can play a real-time strategy game um that you can play like a kind of walking around game you can play kind of a, a point and click adventure kind of thing um is this a thing that you want to jump into and play jet x or, um, you know, or, or Elite Dangerous? I'm guessing no. I'm guessing that, you know, you're going to want... I mean, it's. I know it says that it, it tethers through the PC, so it's bringing the, the compute of the PC, but again, it loses the fidelity of the additional sensors. It loses the fidelity of... Were you, I mean, what can... Do, I guess you would still use your Quest controller with those games? Well, here's the thing. The Quest and the S controllers are the same. So... Um, I, okay. I, and right. I didn't see where they said this. I was very curious. Do I peer my Quest controls, which are the same as the Rift S controls, do I peer those with the PC when I do this? Or do they stay, right, or, do they stay peered to the Quest? Because if I peer is, them to the PC, then there's no lag. And again, the throughput of, of USB-C, you know, I don't... Is it is it USB 3 plus, you know, DVI? I mean, um, well, display yeah, port? So is it, is does it, it have is that it, much bandwidth? Is it USB C or is it? Do they say USB three? USB C. That's what's on the Quest too. The the oval connector that looks like the Oculus symbol. Huh. Yep. Now the the, okay, the yeah, unit. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. The the article that I'm reading didn't specify. So of course the problem with giving you a USB. So is it? Do you? So what is the cable on? Um, on the Quest, is it USB C to a yes. USB A? Yes. Connector. Okay. All right. All right, all right. Um, I would assume that it's got. Yeah, I would assume it's got to be USB three then. Um, 
I don't I don't think that there are a lot of cables with that are made with a C connector on one end and a and a A connector on the other that are that are US that are that are USB two. I know that there are some, but I think in the vast majority you, you like you would actually have to like deliberately like go after getting one of those. Um yeah, I just I th- I think as you as you said, what I think is I think there's gonna be some things where the compute I, I think the controller compute is on the quest, and I think that even though the PC is pushing things to it, there's still things that the headset needs to do. And I, I wonder if the, if the headset with its Snapdragon processor is going to be, um, I don't know, is going to be, it's, it's just not going to be as performant as a, uh, as the Rift S. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I look forward to seeing that. I'll even try it myself. They the article is very specific in saying USB C. So okay. I, I don't. I, I got a feeling that you're going to have to for this to work. You'll have to have a USB C connector in your computer. Most modern my, really? my lab, think, yeah, my desktop's four years old and it has one. Um, but you you think it's an actual C to C connector? I I do. I'm reading the article. It says okay. And it doesn't say USB three anywhere or three point one anywhere. So I, I mean, I think I think that is going to be a thing. I mean, because I'm I'm running, I've got five PCs running in here uh, that are all 2017 or later. Um, of the desktops, I think there is only 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 one of the four desktops. Maybe two of the four desktops have a have a motherboard on board. USB C connector. I mean, in fact, it, it, there may just be one. I think another one has one, but I think that connector is like on the back of a monitor, or or, or maybe the. the G, I think I have a GPU that's got a USB C connector to on it. So, um, so yeah, I think and 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 of course, we're probably of a demographic that's running more up to date, more modern yep. PC components than your average. Um, but of, but of course, then again, the VR demographic is is much more. Like we are than yeah. um, than the average, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, very interesting. The next story I saw there, they have, um, and not that we have to spend a lot of time on this. Is the go ahead? Were you going to chime so, in? Yeah, the, the one thing I was going to add is so where you get an, a, a plus is so correct me if I'm wrong. The Quest visor resolution is slightly higher than the Rift S, isn't it? Yeah, the Quest is the same as the Vive. It's just, it's in that. Yeah. You know, Odyssey Plus, Vibe Pro, okay. um, it's a, right. so, so it's like Index, not better, Index, but... yeah. No, it's in that. Yeah. It's in that. You know, Odyssey Plus, Vibe Pro, Index resolution. The Cosmos is slightly more, but it's that. What is it? Sixteen hundred by fourteen forty. I can't remember. Okay. But yeah. So, so what you'll of course lose with this is with no video cable going to it is, it, you know, not. I mean, if you're a streamer, then you can't mirror the video to your display probably so that might be a limitation um but the nice thing will be is you will get rid of needing to run the thing to a dp cable so this would actually this is the so the great use case for this is people who have laptops Mm. don't have those dp connectors now you have a and the the quest is more portable than the rift s now you have an on the go i go on travel i take my gaming laptop i take a quest and a USB C cable yep and that's my on-the-go VR solution. So, so that'll be a great application for it. Yeah, I mean, my I, my gaming laptop's probably four years old as well, or three years old, and it has both the the mini DP and the USB C. And you know, I haven't had anything to use the USB C for yet. So, I'm looking forward to trying that. This um this other story here, this next story, uh, they they were bragging that. Uh, Oculus users have spent a hundred million, just past the hundred million mark, in the Oculus Store, and um, I'm gonna be honest. The only thing I've been buying there has been exclusives. You know, if the game's on, if the game's not on the Quest and it's on Steam, I get it on Steam because then I'm, you know, HMD agnostic. You know, and uh, right, right, right. Today, Oculus still doesn't support any other vendors but their own. Um, does a hundred hundred million seem like a lot? I'm trying to. I mean, for 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 a business unit that is nothing more than a subdivision of Facebook, um, and I'm trying to think about. I mean, they say so far, so I feel like a hundred million is in 
I might get myself on a, out on a limb here. I feel like that's in the realm of what a, a, a normal, of what a game publisher clears in a quarter, right? So like, so, so I think for VR, it's big. Um, and they said that was over the last year. I mean, I, well, I guess, it's, I guess they're saying what, since Rift S came out in the spring? Uh, it says, I think that's total since the Oculus store. Okay. Opened. So I definitely think the for, Oculus store is making money. Yeah. It's it's this is this number is probably nowhere close to what Steam's doing, but in the same token, I mean it does seem. I mean I don't know how many users they have, but 100 million does seem to be. I mean, is that 100 per customer? I mean, it seems like a lot to me. Yeah. So if I, if I look at for example, you know EA's last quarterly earnings, um, they posted revenues of 743 million for the quarter um, that ended June 2019. So, so a big third-party AAA publisher um, is pulling down seven forty three. So, you know, in, on the order of magnitude of seven hundred million, they made a hundred. Again, it's not necessarily, uh, but we we know that VR is not on that plane, right, of physical performance yet. Um, I think it's it's good enough to just accept it as significant. Like you said, you know, people. I mean, pe- pe- people aren't paying peanuts, right? They're they're paying into the market, which I think. Um, you know, and it's and it's a market that's primarily wrapped around getting you to pay for a game, right? Instead of like the mobile industry, which is wrapped around microtransactions and and free to play and getting you to bump up, um, and even you know a certain segment of the full blown uh, PC market um, is heavily based based on microtransactions. So for something that follows kind of a more traditional financial business model of here, here's a game. Please pay me money for the game. I, I think that's, you know, sounds physically healthy, physically healthy enough for now. Yeah, I think so too. I really do. Um, I think uh, there was some, uh, you know, this was on Reddit and it was talked about quite a bit. Um, you know, the mention of hey, when are we going to get something like the Oasis? You know, uh, in in the not in the RPG element, the VR MMO RPG. But more is the shared virtual world, shared virtual social space. And, you know, there's things like Rec Room, which we've played. There's things like VR Chat, which which uh, is extremely popular. I've ne- never taken the time to play it. But, um, you know, right today, if you're on Steam Home or Oculus Home, you're in a room with up to four people. And it's not massively uh, multiplayer. And so, um, you know, Zuckerberg... Who, uh, if you haven't read the book, the the insider book about Palmer Lucky and what happened at Facebook, I highly recommend you pick it up. Mark is not an angel, and uh, and and the author has tons of proof to, about that. So um, he has some uh, he has some apologies to hand out. But having said that, um, he had tweeted that uh, you know stay tuned, and what they came out with was what they're calling Facebook Horizons, and it kind of looks like a VR chat, a rec room. It's cutesy, cartoony um, from what we saw. I mean, it looked fun. It looked very lighthearted. It looked very open. At one point, the uh, the lady puts on a, a, a mustache to prove that you, if you want to cross-dress, it's not a problem. You can, you can. I know Microsoft went through this a year or two ago. You know, guys can wear dresses, girls can wear pants, whatever. But in any case, it looked cutesy. It looked fun. The the actor who did this, she was just funny and and great and uplifting. But um, I don't know. What did you think? Did you see that video? This, I, I I didn't see the video. I've I've read through the through the postings and and whatnot about it and seen some of the still images. This reminds me of emotionally. It calls back to PlayStation Home. I love to me the PlayStation Home. Like. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a place to walk around, meet people. Um, socially interact with people. Um, you know, PlayStation Home, you know, while it certainly had its trolls and stuff, like, really wasn't a bad place. Like, I, f- I felt more comfortable in PlayStation Home than I felt going online and playing a game of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, you know, in that time frame. Um, and so that's the big thing, is if you can bring together a community where people are not jerks and where you can you know, different people of different stripes and walks of life can go in and not get harassed and abused and bullied. That's the key thing I feel like to um, an environment uh, like this. Or if you don't do that, 
please bring a party chat system so that people can get in the chat with just themselves and yeah. their friends. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, they say it's going to be totally inclusive. Does that mean they'll accept people who wear blue hats and people who wear red hats? You know, you know, people who wear all kinds of different symbols, uh, you know. Um, I hope it is. I hope it is. And yeah, to your point about play, if 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 you're watching and you're not an ex, a, a PlayStation guy, um, PlayStation Home was like a um, I don't know how, what's the best way to explain it. You, you had your own home. You could invite people to. You could put furniture in it. Then there was a social space, almost like a mall outside mall area. You could go to different shops and buy things. Um, what, what's a good good analogy of what it was like? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think your description of it covered it, right? You, you know, there were, you could go and you could decorate your home, which would be similar to like, um, well, I was thinking more of, uh, I don't even remember. What is Vive's thing called again? Infinity? Well, I don't, Vive Yeah, Port? well, it's, Vive Port, right, right, right. Well, it, it actually, it's not, so it's, it's similar to when you go into the Oculus space and you can go into your home and it's got, you know, you've got stuff in there and little, props and things that you can play with in the VR space. Um, but the addition like was that from there in PlayStation home, you could say you could go to the mall and shop yeah. or you could go to the arcade and interact with other people. Um, like you mentioned, there was a big courtyard area and a, uh, and a boardwalk and places you could go and you could dance um, or you could, you know, play games with other people. There was like the plane game, um, like the aerobatics game or whatever. I think there was a speedboat thing or something like that. So um, in a lot of cases, the way a lot of people used to use PlayStation Home is that's where you would go and find people to squat up with, is you would kind of go and there would be places where, you know, somebody would come by and say, hey, you know, Call of Duty or whatever, and you would, you know, meet somebody and go off and play games. So, uh, Yeah, it was kind of think... like a third-person perspective. Yeah. Right, right, right. And it wasn't cartoony at all. It was actually, very, the graphics were excellent. It was... It... <laughs> Kind of like Sims in a way, but but uh, it was just really right. polished. I mean, I don't know. It's hard to explain. But and, um, and, and to be quite honest, like I feel like this is a great move, but by, by by Facebook, I actually think it's. I'll, I'd even go so far, um, you know, in terms of, of being immediately bullish about it to say that this this is something that they need. Hmm. Like, you have VR. If you're lucky, you know one other person, right? <laughs> Like you, you, you and your group uh, in in the gamer show. The fact that you know you have four to eight people in there that are all VR players, that's amazing and almost unprecedented, right? Like the only way you know a VR friend is if somebody in your like real physical uh, environs and you get together and say, "Hey, I'm buying VR. Are you gonna buy VR?" Yeah. Um, to me, it's really difficult, and hopefully, this will facilitate you know social interactivity and uh, an online community between. Um, people who have these uh, these VR sets. Yeah, I think definitely on the PC side for sure. I think a lot of the younger folks on the PSVR, not saying everybody who has PSVR is younger than not, um, but uh, I think they, that's more of your, you know, peer pressure type. Well, I'm getting it, you get it, but on PC, it's 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 easy to talk somebody to buying in a you know a thirty dollar game on sale, but it's hard to talk somebody into buying a four hundred dollar headset. Um, I'm very interested. I look forward to trying it out. Um, what they, I, I'm very interested to see uh, what they bring to the table that's different or new when compared to Rec Room because Rec Room's done a phenomenal job. Um, you know, we've talked in the past, you and I, about Pass Through Plus on the Rift S, and that's not only coming to the Quest, but they're going to add Pass Through on Demand. Where, because right now you only get to see what your cameras see when you go through the uh, Guardian, right? So when I go to my computer and I reach down and start, I see my computer. On the Quest, it's not quite as good as on the Rift S. Um, it's workable, but it's not as clear. But now they're going to allow you to um, bring it up on demand. You won't have to actually go through. So if you drop your controller or you bump into something, then you can just press a button and see what that is um, without having to trigger the... Because sometimes the Guardian, especially... And that's one of the big differences between the Rift S and Windows Mixed Reality. Windows Mixed Reality would rescan my play space every time I put it on. Um, the Rift S does not. And because I've been in flux here in the office, um, I, I, I have to... Like, my play space was offset by, like, three feet. 
so um yeah so i think this is a great feature I, I'm, I'm looking forward to them uh them coming out with that and, it, and it's such a i mean i don't want to say it was man but yeah like they're this is the most right like enhancement that has ever been done to a product. This is a critical safety thing for me. Like just like, I mean that an electrical fire could break out right within feet of you and you wouldn't know. Right. Um, and you know, I, and I guess I, I'm curious, I, I realizing now, man, I, I wonder, cause I, as I was, I was about to say something about smell and I'm like, I don't actually know if your smell is, increased when you have a vr headset on due to sensory deprivation or or actually subdued i think it's subdued because i think you're hyper focused on what you're being exposed to in vr but my simple point being you don't have a lot in your bag of tricks to protect yourself in terms of uh of of a safety uh event or situation developing while you're underneath a vr headset um it would be nice to be able to hit a button. I personally like the other thing is like when I'm streaming, like one of the things I hate is I periodically have to like physically lift the visor up to like, see if anything's going on around me, but then also to look at the chat. Um, and you know, provided that, uh, that there's not like a, a color tone problem or something that would prevent me from reading the chat. Um, it would be great to like hit a button and go to pass through and be able to live stream games and, and see the chat, particularly on a platform like Twitch, which is bothersome because unlike YouTube, you can't just disable chat uh, on Twitch. And so there are other things I have to do, which basically prevents anybody from talking um, in my chat when I'm live streaming because I just don't want somebody to come in and spew racist stuff right in my in my chat room that I can't see for like 15 minutes while I'm under the visor. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I also hate just people thinking I'm ignoring them. You know, they're saying, hey, what's up? And then it's like, you don't know, chat back. It's like, well, I guess you're not paying attention. So yeah, here's a good thing, though. This And this has happened over the last four weeks. That feature where you can pull in just a window was put back into the Oculus, uh, you know, the, the, the Oculus, uh, Oculus <laughs> uh, interface. So when you when you're, you got your headset on and you bring up the Oculus menu and you get the liner of buttons on the bottom, one of them now lets you choose... A window to pull in so i actually did this i pulled in like i popped out the youtube chat the youtube chat into a separate window and i pulled that into my play space and i actually placed it kind of behind me so that i had to actually turn my head to see if anybody was chatting um so that's that's pretty amazing yeah i'm so glad that's back we haven't been using it because we we moved the vr stuff over to its own channel live from the mm -hmm. oasis so we don't get a lot of people chatting when we're playing um mm -hmm. but um it, yeah, that's so you may want to check if if you can get that Twitch chat into be a its own separate window, either through yeah. a restream or through Twitch or whatever. Right. Yeah, I'll have to play around because of course I I use dual PC, so yep. the PC that I'm gaming on actually doesn't have my Twitch chat on. Oh, I guess I could I could bring it up. Well, that's what I did. I'm doing the dual PC thing too, and I right, but right. I I just pulled the YouTube stream up okay. on the on the computer I had the VR on right. and popped out okay. the chat. That's how I did it. Even though yeah, I, yeah, I didn't need to watch it twice because I had the headset on, but right, right, right. Okay, um, very cool. Yeah, it is. It's very cool. Couple things here. Couple of games of uh, you know games that we have known about. Um, As God's Wrath slated to come out in October. I think it's October tenth, and then uh, Stormland is uh, looking to be released in November. Was it? No, I, I'm going to open up the article because I don't remember what the date was it was november i don't want to i don't think it was 10th november 14th so those are two high profile stormlands is where you're playing as a droid or a robot and taking on other robots to recover your to take back your land asgard wrath i mean stormland does have two-player co-op which looks cool but that's the extent of the multiplayer there asgard's wrath is your kind of like a norse guard god and you take over different people, and and uh, if you guys don't know about that, you can. There's plenty of videos on that. Um, I don't because I mostly do multiplayer. I'm not really uh, going to jump on either of those. Were uh, either of those on your buy list? Uh, not not right now because I'm still uh, I'm just not fully engaged back into uh, dedicating uh, some VR playtime. I will probably start that back up in October. 
Um, but no, I haven't had, uh, I haven't gotten engaged enough to start, you know, restaking out, you know, what my, you know, potential purchase list is. Well, another couple of games that got announced was, um, Vader Immortal episode two. Okay. I really liked episode one. It's only 45 minutes. It's only nine ninety nine. I enjoyed it. There was a lightsaber dojo. Again, this is, uh, cross by you buy it on the quest you get on the rift vice versa so episode two's come out and you get force powers it kind of harkens me back to jedi knight dark forces 2 um and it looked pretty cool so that's a, a, a must buy for me just to continue that story um and i don't think you've picked up you picked that up yet have you the episode no, one no, no because that's definitely yeah that's definitely a, a standing vr right yeah thing definitely. So um, definitely something I would consider now that I have the space reconfigured, probably have a little more room to swing my arms without knocking over a blasted uh, IPS panel. <laughs> so I yeah, that. So that'd be interesting. I, do we have a Starfighter combat Star Wars VR uh, game? You know, I see a lot of the guys, and I always agree with them, on Reddit. They talk a lot about an X-Wing, X-Wing Alliance, you know, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, which I know both of us are big fans of. Um, you know, we two of the best space games out there, Elite Dangerous and No Man's Sky, now you know now supports VR, No Man's Sky. It was kind of buggy for me, so I haven't been playing it in VR. Um, you know, we have the older games by, uh, you know, Eve Valkyrie, but... Um, a proper successor, like a proper, really, what I would like to see, and there are there are people, there are people trying to make it, but um, n there's nothing that's going as far as a Kickstarter, or you know, going into beta. That's a proper VR space MMO, you know. So uh, if if you don't consider Elite Dangerous or No Man's Sky two flat screen games that are that are pretty cool in VR, um, then no, we don't have a VR proper. Okay. Yeah, the unfortunate thing is, uh, Star Citizen, uh, in a very early build, supported VR, but it was eventually taken out. So, uh, supposedly it will eventually get it put back in. Um, and that, that to me, man, I mean, I mean, it's got bugs and it's got issues, but when, when Star Citizen works, it is the most amazing space simulation MMO kind of experience ever um it is and it's definitely it's definitely the golf swing effect right it's definitely like when you're when you're a hacker as a golfer but like once every 18 holes you hit that one stroke and you go oh i got it i can figure it out and then you proceed to play a horrible for the remainder but that one stroke convinces you that somewhere in you there's that capability to to be on with this thing that's what starts it it's like like the first time you walk out the first time you're in the space station and you and you get the directions on what landing pads your ship is on, and you follow the arrows on the space station, go through the airlock, walk out onto the thing, and hit the button, and your ladder folds out, and the canopy opens, and you climb up, and there's all the sound effects and everything. You're like, man, this is amazing. So if that got VR, I feel like that, that would be the, 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 the big chicken dinner right there. Of course, it would be buggy as all heck, probably, so that would be the only thing. Yeah, yeah I, would, I'm a big fan of Star Citizen, but I've when I first got it, it the performance was just really, really bad. Right, like right, right. like 15 frames per second. Even the experts who had the best rigs were saying they're suffering 15, 20 frames per second. It's gotten a ton better. I struggle with the controls because I play so much Elite Dangerous. I can't, could never find a way to make the controls similar enough. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I mean, I'm an old man. My whole toss has to be the same in every game I play. You know? <laughs> right, and right, right. um cuz I just it's, it's, and it's it, pretty configurable and it's pretty nice but the, the the again the problem I have with it is is it has this layer of bugs. So you get a configuration and you think you have it working right. The one time you boot the game and everything doesn't doesn't work, it's often difficult like is it me? And then I've struggled with it for like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 yeah. minutes in a mission only to find out I'm I'm butting my head up in some bug. Um, but anyway, all of that is just to say, uh, what, what I was really after was, do we have a, you know, while Vader is coming out and the license is transferred and Disney's about to get all their Disney plus money, 
Um, and ILM is actively engaged with with at least one development team that's dedicated to VR. Man, it sure would be nice to get like a true, yeah. like down to the bow, like like Poe Dameron's you know Starfighter game or something like that in VR. Absolutely, I totally agree. Um, you know, there have been some people who have put together set their own. Um, people have gotten some of the older games working in VR, like X Wing Alliance. And there have been uh, students who have posted videos of, uh, you know, the mock-ups they've done in, for, for for college, which look really cool. And there's actually, I think I sent this to you probably fourth or fifth show. This guy created a uh, a, ben, uh, uh, a test bed where everything in the spaceship was controllable, like a Voltol or a, um, you know, those games where you can reach out and touch everything. And it was wicked cool. But yeah, no, we don't have that yet. I w- I, I'm looking forward to it. You know what we do have, though, is the first first-person shooter that I probably will buy. Um, I have the original game over in the library there. It's uh, Respawn finally announced. Now, now it was announced before OC6 that this game has been pushed into 2020. Right. But uh, Respawn um, did actually show off their new game. Their Oculus, Oculus exclusive game, which I think I'll probably get this one. I kind of liked the video. This is Medal of Honor in VR, above and beyond. And I really, it looked fun because you could peer around corners and the bad guys are shooting you. You can yeah. throw like your combat knife at them. Um, you know, if they throw a grenade at you, you could reach up, grab it and throw it back at them. It looked like this fun. Was- it didn't look like it was intensely gory like a, uh, like a, you know, Gears of War. You know, and I, I just, you know, I, we try to keep our streams over at Live from the Oasis and the Gamer Show in that PG-13 area, you know, right. and uh, we try not to go into the R, the R arena. So, but, no. but what did you think? Did, did, do, you, do you think that's going to be a... Uh... It's, I mean, again, from a, from an evolution of the industry, industry perspective, this is one of the drum beats that is needed, and it's a thing that the industry needs in order to tip the scales and he- and head in the direction of not just being niche. When, as I've always said, and, and, and what I'm in fact looking for, even to willingly dedicate more of my gaming time to VR, is I've got to have core, staple, triple A, common genre games in VR. Like everything right now in VR that appeals to me is all niche, highly specialized, requires additional equipment, and is highly complex to the point where when I step away from it for two or three weeks, it's it's a big learning curve to get back up. Like I just I can't do Elite Dangerous, right? Because Elite Dangerous to me is it's a game you gotta stick with. Um, and I'm just not willing to allocate and dedicate that time. Even for me getting under the visor and going to play Overload, and I do want to play some digital combat simulator, um, and uh, and some of the other you know space sim games that I play, it's a chunky ramp. It's a chunky learning curve to get back on that bicycle. This is the type of thing that I need. I need like the stuff that I'm playing out of VR, Destiny Two, um, The Division Two, um, you know, even even RPGs and turn-based strategy games. Like I need that kind of core staple AAA menu item stuff in VR to, to, to get me, you know, engaged with it more. So this is the t- this is the type of thing that you need. Um, I- I'm super excited about it. What's funny to me is, and again, you, you know, you, you and I and the, and the members of the 2 kg podcast, we, we're true students of the industry, right? We can rattle off history, um, you know, things that have changed hands between developers, development studios, all that kind of stuff. This is funny to me. It's a, this is a little offbeat from VR, but this is funny to me in the historical track of this thing. So now you have the guys who ran the Call of Duty series, who for a period of time, largest competitor was Medal of Honor. Um, now having Medal of Honor placed in their hands, and instead of doing like a revival game, Doing it in VR, this is a really weird, like, what dimension am I in where this type of deal gets put together? So I'm super excited to see uh, how this lands. Man, it's uh, it's it's an incredibly high bar um, to, to, to think of at this stage. Like, I, 
I would have said getting to this kind of thing was still a couple of years out to a point where it lands as a game that appeals to the mainstream. It's a high bar. But, I mean, in recent history, I can't think of another studio that you would want to hand it to, right, other than the guys who have done Titanfall, Apex Legends, and have a Star Wars game about to come out. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I enjoyed Titanfall 1. It was multiplayer only. Titanfall 2 had a single-player campaign that was just phenomenal. I mean, it's rare that I even consider playing a single-player campaign a second time. I mean, I'm playing through Destiny now again for probably the fifth or sixth time with my grandson. So that's a game that you just go back to and you're like, wow. You know, but Titanfall is great. So these guys, you know, and, and then they have their history when they weren't Respawn, like you mentioned. I mean, I think it. I think, I think the story is going to be there. They do a little vid doc where they talk about. They actually interview World War II vets. They actually do the sound. You think they would have a library of sound, but no. They go out and they record the tanks again. They record the machine guns again. All new for this uh, for this title. So I'm excited about it. I really am. Um, I guess, and that brings us to this. This is probably my last uh, article that I, that I had pulled out that I wanted to talk about. Um, was the uh, the future stuff. And they talked about, you know, we already talked about the finger tracking and whatnot, but they talked, and they talked about they're working on air glasses for the future. It's years away, they said. But um, they did talk about two new half dome um, prototypes. And the half dome three was the one I was very interested in because they got rid of the motors for the very focus, right? And they're using a multi-layer LCD, um, which um, to to get your different focus lengths, you know. And it's it's really small. I mean, it's it's approaching Ready Player One type small, uh, with compared to like a Rift S, right? And um, you know, it, it you know, it, it, I would love to know what the field of view is. You know, I you know, I think we all want two hundred degrees, <laughs> but again. These are uh, these are uh, 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 prototypes, but it's good to know what they're working on. It was it felt good, you know. Who knows if any of this technology will show up next year? I you know, I was kind of assuming though they haven't announced anything. Again, this is day one, but I was assuming probably they would release because the Rift S is supposed to be that in between product. I was assuming that they would release a new headset next fall, and uh, maybe that won't be the case. They made it sound like. The technology that's showing in the half dome prototypes are pretty far out. So, uh, just to throw it to you, your thoughts on this, and do you think do you think next fall is uh, is you know about you know fourteen months? Do you think that's when the next Rift, maybe the Rift Two, comes out, or do you think it's substantially farther down the road? Whew. man, that's a big that's a mighty big bet to uh, put any kind of money on. Um, there's there's part of me that wants to say yes. There's part of me that says, for Facebook at least, you can't do another slow burn product release cycle like we've had, right? Like VR needed that time to kind of wind up to generation two. But I want to, I, a part of me feels like the way for Facebook to start turning money out of this thing is you got to start putting out more iterative hardware more quickly. And, it, and in some ways it needs to, look like the mobile market right i don't know if they if i don't know if technology wise we're we're there yet um but but i think a big thing is it's, it's not hugely talked about but i i feel like next console generation there's got to be something going on with vr there right i i think i'd just be highly surprised if xbox does nothing with vr um, for a second entire life cycle of a of a of a core product platform, that would really surprise me. Um, the Switch obviously probably just doesn't have enough power to do true VR. I know they have their little goofy Labo thing, but so so that to me that makes me feel like again, what PC gaming needs and and in the ramp up to console generation, whatever it seems to me to be a logical evolutionary step to have an incremental product release in 2020. Um, that is 
partially experimentation and laying um, evolutionary groundwork, like a you know a talk, not not a full blown tick, but an, an upgrade to the Rift S baseline um, as a coil up to a larger leap that you want to make in twenty twenty one. Yeah, and and I could see it being a quest too. I mean, mobile moves fa- much faster than than PC, and a quest too that with better integration into your PC. Look, so we're talking about the Quest Link earlier, and how or Oculus Link, how that allow. The, so if 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 in Quest Two, it's the same price, uses the latest Snapdragon uh, or Qualcomm chipset, and is able to do something with the PC much better than a USB-C, right? Whether it's wireless or, or 5G or proprietary. or uh, We got 802.11 AX and AY coming, which to me personally is, I mean, any any Wi-Fi device I buy in the future has to have one of those two new. Right. There instead, I think they're still draft. Although, I think uh, Intel's Giga Wi-Fi, well, Y Giga or Y Gig, Right. It's based on the rough draft of uh, the AX, I believe. Yeah. And, and, and that's what and the Vive wireless adapter uses. Right. And in fact, you're, you're, you're treading ground on things that I would expect to see in a late fall 2020 release of a product update to, to Oculus. I would expect to see uh, something mobile, something that can access 5G. Yeah. And, and I wouldn't be surprised to see... A, in, an evolutionary step that brings us to the hybrid model that instead of this time where you deploy a mobile powered variant um, from its engine perspective, that then you, you cross walk over to PC compatibility. I would be surprised to not see a thing that is a here, here's, here's the rift S successor that you can run on a PC to play high fidelity games that now you can detach the cable take with you on travel and will run like a quest. So, and I, and I can, I can see the advertising, the, the power of the rift combined with the mobility of the quest. Yeah. And I, I quite, quite honestly, being able to do both is, is awesome because the quest games are great. Um, you know, if you don't have your PC or you don't have a PC to be able to buy a mobile unit, play VR that way. And then if your buddies have the PC have a PC game, you can just plug it in your PC and play those with them. I mean, that's the best of both worlds, right? I mean, it really is. So, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what we get next year. I don't think we'll see a new... Tell me if you think I'm off base here. I don't think we'll see a new Index or a new Cosmos um, next year because th- those products just came out this year. They're not that iterative, you know, S you know, in between step, those are major launches and uh, long time development. So if anybody comes out with a, with a new headset next year, I, the only people I can think of who are out there currently, the big players is Oculus. I do. I have heard rumors that Samsung is readying a new product for this fall. Samsung's Odyssey and Odyssey plus got pretty good reviews. So that'd be interesting. Yeah, I, I would definitely expect more windows mixed reality headsets next year. Um, which strangely as that might sound like it, it it seems weird that like the 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 operating side right and, and the windows mixed reality software side is silent however the windows pc vendors continue to crank these things out great um i agree with you i wouldn't expect to see a valve index uh, although valve historically shows a penchant for not really caring what it's how its customers feel or what they think um i would be surprised i mean i it would knowingly be a bad move for Valve to go, hey, here's an iterative index, and we've got the price down to six ninety nine, and then have all those one thousand dollar people flip out, right? About you know how much money they spent, you know, one year ago. So I, I don't think um, Valve will do that. And HTC, man, has as as great as it is to see the Cosmos arrive. Like every like every year I go in, I'm like, this is this is the year HTC goes away. So like I don't. Really, I don't physically understand like how they're even surviving now, um, particularly in an incredibly upscale, high-end, high-price, high-cost market that is their only remaining thing. Um, yeah. So, you know, ho- hopefully they'll survive through next year. But like, 
every time they release a product, I'm like, this has got to be the last gasp. Like there can't be any more R and D money left. <laughs> right. So, um, so yeah, I agree with you. I only expect to see hardware from Oculus next year. Um, but I do expect to continue to see windows mixed reality headsets. Yeah. I mean the, uh, the reverb's back. It's on sale. People still say when you get a working unit, the screens are to die for you're looking at five ninety nine, not six ninety nine. has a much better resolution, but I'm, I'm not counting. I'm not counting Samsung out. They, you know, they have, um, they've been in VR since the beginning, right? Doing the gear with the uh, Oculus and, um, the Odyssey Plus and Odyssey were, the, you know, the same resolution as as the Index, right? And, and virtually the same resolution as the Cosmos and Quest. So um, if they came out with a product, you know, they, they always had a premium product and it was well received. So the, the problem is, of course, with Windows Mixed Reality is two cameras versus four or five or six. So the tracking there suffers because of that. But... Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Now, was there any story we didn't get to that you had pulled out as we went through the list that you wanted to discuss? No, yeah, no, you hit them all. All right, man. Well, this was fun getting together to talk about yeah. VR again. And I hope yeah, everybody right. watching enjoyed, uh, you know, our thoughts about Oculus Connect. Day one, Oculus OC6, I guess. Day one. <laughs> and uh, we're going to sign off now. Hope everybody has a great week. And until next time, my friends, peace.